Welcome back. It is uh, officially trout season in uh, the Driftless area. Uh, we had about uh, three or four solid days of almost 60 degree weather. We had some rain last night and it is officially ice out for pretty much the entire Madison area here. And uh, what that means for me is uh, gonna be a lot more trout fishing in my future here uh, as we go through. The, the other part of that that it means for trout fishing is um, probably some not so stellar conditions. Number one, you can probably hear it, and I apologize for the audio, but we got about 15 mile per hour winds today, which doesn't make casting fun. Uh, but secondly, we've got uh, a lot of mud in the water from the snow melt off and a little bit of rain yesterday. And uh, it can make for some tricky conditions if you're not sure how to fish it. I think for a lot of people, those type of conditions mean, hey, I'm gonna stay home, I'm not gonna hit the rivers. But ultimately, it can actually create some really unique instances to target some areas where you normally wouldn't be able to. A lot of times, when you don't have these kind of chocolate milk conditions or these really muddy waters, trout are gonna spook pretty easily. But when it's muddy like this, they're not focused on that. They can't see it as easily as they would with kind of gin clear water we get in the driftless area. So present some opportunities to swing some streamers, swing some woolly buggers upstream from pools and uh, potentially target some little bit bigger fish or some fish you may not be able to get uh, into some good casting lanes prior to that point or would spook if uh, you, know, you were casting on them normally. So that's the goal for today. Uh, we'll see if we can't uh, survive some of these harsh conditions and uh, get one on the end of the line here. Not sure we showed up on video, but there's actually a, a fish that rose just up past that, that boulder in the water. That's one of the things, you know, keep your eyes out. If you're kind of searching and seeing where they're at, one of the easiest ways if you see trout rising, sneak up on them, find a good way to get to them, and then go after them. streamers I'll show it in a second off the current I talked about that fish rising that's what I was targeting was trying to get across the lake to do it so I'll show you a quick quick picture of this guy and then we'll uh we'll get him back in the water here man really nice trout probably 16 17 inches uh I would guess so real real killer trout all right let's get him back That was a pretty cool trout to catch, uh, especially for the size of just kind of this system. You know, a solid 16, 17 inch trout, uh, you know, really any around the driftless is a really solid trout. Um, in a pretty cool way to catch it too. You know, you probably saw a little bit earlier in the video, I pointed out that, you know, I'd seen a, a fish rising, a, you know, a few yards up the river from me. And that's really where I started to target when I, I went to this next section was really targeting in where I saw that trout rise. And you see, I tried to throw some nymphs first, but trying to get it across the river in the wind and also try to get my drift and mending correctly, just wasn't gonna work with this. You know, we've got some pretty terrible wind conditions today, probably about 15 mile per hour, which I'm, I'm sure you can hear in some of the videos here. But, uh, you know, what that allowed me to do seeing that trout was, uh, you know, have an idea of where to swing those flies into. One of the other things that, uh, you know, I wanted to show you is just what I actually caught that on. And you'll see I have a little double woolly bugger rig going on here on my nine foot five weight rod. And he actually bit on uh, this smaller olive, uh, you know, cone head woolly bugger, rubber legs on it as well, a little bit of flash in there. And, uh, you know, it's interesting. I, I, I sometimes will run two different woolly buggers or streamers. Uh, you know, first kind of learned this doing fishing on the trips for, uh, you know, steelhead or, or big brown trout. 
but you can run two of these and especially in areas where you may not know what the fish are keying in on what color what size and, and you'll see i've varied it up with two different sizes two different colors of woolly buggers and especially when you're swinging you know it doesn't need to be perfect those flies are going to kind of jumble in that water column and uh, it, it's going to allow you to have two different pre presentations very similar to like a nymph dropper rig that you would see and uh, you'll see this time around it was helpful having that bottom one because that smaller woolly bugger is what he keyed in on You know, you seem to be successful a couple times already today. I've talked a lot about swinging those streamers. And uh, you might be wondering, you know, how do you do it efficiently? A lot of times when you hear people talk about swinging streamers, swinging, you know, woolly buggers, uh, I first heard about it in your Pacific Northwest. You're swinging them for, you know, 60 pound king salmon or cohos. And, and that's not the case. You can use it just as efficiently in these smaller streams. And uh, generally, you know, as far as rules go, I don't think there's a lot of them with it. I think it's hard to screw up swinging, but uh, you know, I generally try to target downstream and I'm gonna look at casting about 45 degrees out from where I am and just letting that line swing over until it's straight with that current. Once it's straight, I might leave it in there for 10, 15 seconds and then you know, kind of jig it up. But you'll find that even in that 10 or 15 seconds, you let it sit there, that might be enough of movement in that water column to entice the fish out of a pool or even out of the side channels inside of the river and the driftless here. So again, you know, to show you how it's, how it's actually done here, you know, I'm gonna take my cast, put it about 45 degrees out, and you're gonna see I'm gonna kind of follow that down with my rod and the current until I get it pretty much straight into the actual current itself. And you see, I'm gonna just kind of sit here, leave it for 10 or 15 seconds. And uh, if nothing's in here, I'm not getting any bite. You know, I'm either gonna jig it up, or I can just do little strips and kind of pull that up as well. If I don't get anything, a lot of times I'd walk six inches to a foot down. And I'm going to recast. And all that does is just give me another six inches or 12 inches down the river that I didn't hit in the first cast. And I can easily cover a good section of river or a good run or a good pool uh, with this technique. That one, right on that swing. Get it right on the side of my, oh, still got a fin here. Get right on that swing. Uh, swinging it downstream, so I have the ability, I'm not spooking him out of the pool. He actually hit the top fly. Let me get him back quick here, but you'll actually see I got the bottom fly here. He hit the uh, top black one this time. Uh, and, uh, you know, the crazy part is we had the green one hit earlier. So it just shows that, uh, you know, keying in on a little bit different colors might be the case. So don't want to get him out of the water too long. Let's get him back and uh, on his way. Well, you know, overall, two trout on a, a day where we've got some pretty less than desirable conditions with high winds, really muddy waters is... Uh, a success in my books. Uh, you know, you can't get too discouraged. Uh, depending on the streams, you know, sometimes I consider a one trout day a, a miracle, uh, you know, considering some of the tougher streams we have here in the driftless section, and this in particular being one of them. But, uh, you know, you saw a few techniques that uh, can make less than desirable conditions a little bit easier to fish. And obviously knowing the stream, knowing where the pools are is crucial coming into this situation. But once you do, you got a little bit of a different opportunity to present you know, that fly or that streamer, or that woolly bugger or nymph uh, in a little bit different way than what you normally would where you might spook those trout. Uh, so ho hopefully you got a good idea of how to put this into your own fishing. And again, turn those days where you might think about staying home into some really successful days. I've had some of my best days uh, in these conditions, especially because you know, those trout aren't spooked by me overall. So, you know, as always, hopefully you liked what you saw and you learned a couple things. You know, if you've got any type of content you'd like to see, 
or any questions or any specifics you'd want me to go into. I always want to kind of tailor what people are looking for and what people want to learn about in these videos. So, you know, as always, uh, shoot me some messages, leave me some feedback, and, uh, you know, be looking forward to meeting you on the next video.